Thank you for staying with us. Across the nation, there have been alarms of terrorists disguised to lay ambush on travelers, especially on the highways. Now, states like Ondo, Osho, Ekiti, Nasarawa, and others have now become a hub for bandits and kidnappers. The Pan-Yoruba Social, Cultural, and Political Organization, Afeni Ferry, has called on President Balatinubu to urgently convene a stakeholders meeting to tackle the degenerating security situation in the country. While calling for the establishment of uh, state and local government police, the National Publicity Secretary, Comrade Jari Ajayi, suggested that insiders have a hand in these killings and kidnappings, and as such, actions must be taken swiftly. But joining us in the studio is a public affairs analyst, Ola Dengde Ario, to talk more on this. Good morning. It's good, good morning. to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Is multi-level policing, as the pan group of Feni Ferry has put it, the way to go if we say we want to address this matter of kidnapping or insecurity as a whole? Thank you very much. The, the starting point is this. Kidnapping comes on to the science and the art of it. It's either going to be um, target kidnapping or random kidnapping. Right. In target kidnapping, they go after specific individuals. Maybe they've already studied them that they had money and they've monitored their movements, so it becomes an easy job for them. In random kidnapping, they just hit the road looking for any unfortunate soul or group of people that they will head and then take away. Now, the, the attraction in kidnapping is the financial reward. Okay? Whereas in the abduction, people are taken away. In, though in both cases, they use force, they use violence. Hmm. They are taken away either to deprive them of liberty towards a goal or an, an end. Like the last election, my friend contested in Uzoro. On the election day, he was taken away and he was released after the results had been released. He was, he was denied the grace of organizing his supporters you know, for the last minute mm. campaign. He wasn't beaten, no money was demanded from him. They fed him where he was, we gave him was whatever great. he asked for. That was abduction. So the was problem that now, political exactly. The problem now is this: you want to ask yourself why we are having growing cases of abduction and kidnapping, but they go side by side. And the only thing I can say is that at a point in the life of this country, we lost touch with our realities, and instead of attacking some of these criminal events frontally. We were hugging them. In the Southeast, there was a time if your property was used to uh, keep a kidnapped person or you were a part of, no matter how little is your link, they would demolish your house. And at that time, it stopped to almost zero level. But we must go back to how and how, where did this start? Ninja yeah. Delta began kidnapping. But at that time, they were seizing majorly foreigners, expatriates working for the oil companies. They would seize them, bring out demands and all of that. Whether they are made or partially made, the guys get to re be released. Except where they die, due to the inclement condition of where they are kept, there was no issue of people killing, you know, to get that Maybe demand. Someone might want to fall, uh, fault your position about uh, Niger Delta being the, um, the one beginning uh, kidnapping because, you, of course, you always know there is something we call Bomo Bomo in the Yoruba land. Yeah, That's but that was yeah. a long time ago and very few and far between. In all my years in Nabiruta, we only had the recorded of a missing adult who, who was later found with her head missing. Mm. A long, I mean, I'm talking... A long, the unfortunate thing is the, the, that woman was mother 
So we, we bought in my secondary school. Yeah, so that wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been. So you know, can't term that as that it is kidnapping. Major Delta. That be, that be no, no. You see, when they say bomo bomo, it's something you hear from a distance. Just like when I was growing up, when you hear terrorism, it's something you hear. You know, uh, Beirut, uh, Lebanon, those far places. But suddenly, everything just came to not begin to live with us. Yeah. And we are behaving as if we can wish those things. We, we can. We've not been frontal enough in attacking them. And I've said it several times, that security is everybody's business. How do you mean? Not just the police. It's not been frontal. Yeah, I, I'm going to go there now. We've not done enough to cover these things. There have been people who were apprehended as being part of a kidnapping um, a group or gang who were an operation that went bad. They were taken to court and by whatever magic, they were released on bail only for them to go back to the streets again, arrange more kidnap uh, uh, cases, and then they were caught again. You now hear the police say, oh, we've seen this guy twice here. So you ask yourself, a serious community, a serious nation, how do you now release people who wreck havoc? And you see, some of these things, because we have created a no consequence environment. Mm. Yeah, stylishly. I was reading a report yesterday. Somebody stole 23 billion naira. It was found guilty by a court of law in Nigeria. What happened? It was fined, uh, sent to, said to go to jail for two years or pay 250,000 naira. Yes. The report was printed, I mean, mm. yesterday. And I was like, what is this? So we technically, knowingly or unknowingly, people read all of these things and they are encouraged to say, oh, if I can hit it hard, perhaps I can pay and I'll be released. If I can. That's why I said we're not serious. No, another thing is insecurity. Uh, intelligence plays a serious role. What do I mean by intelligence? They will have covertly and overly been picking information here and there. They will always know when criminals are coming in certain cases mm -hmm. or where, when they are parading in places. But they don't get to do anything and they still strike. There have been cases of people writing letters that they are coming to your place mm -hmm. to rob. They still go. Yeah. And you Me ask too. yourself, and we have security and all of these things? Yeah. So what, what would you adduce, you know, based on all of these things that you've read out, what would you adduce to being the reason for all of this, you know, breakdown of, um, um, in, you know, lack of intelligence in able to forestall any kind of attacks from right. these, these, uh, uh, these criminals? The first one is the failure of intelligence gathering. Because they follow, if they are always up front, ahead of the criminal, they will think twice. Matter of fact, in the study of... Um, um, perimeter control. What we do is to make sure that without noise, the intending attacker is able to know the layers of obstacles ahead of him, and then it becomes detached. He walks away. But here, we don't get to have all of that. And if I tell you how much we had spent on security, budgeted and expended mm -hmm. by the record in the last 10, 20 years, you will scream in trillions, but it's not getting better. Number two is the fact that we still hog a lot of uh, criminal activity that we should be precise in dealing with without wasting time. In China, if you steal money, there's no issues around it. The moment you are convicted, you are a dead beat. In Indonesia, if you are caught with drug, whether hard or soft, no matter the quantity, little or massive, the person is dead. In those places, they still have cases of drugs and all that, but very few and far in between, mm. okay? Because they know the environment. That's, look, no nonsense. They will deal with you once you are caught. And they've done so much to me that you hardly can escape. But in our own situation, it's not so. And of course, the troubled in the, the northern part of Nigeria has consistently been worsening over the years. So what do you see? People run away from the north, and then they come to the areas where supposedly there's a measure of peace. And then when they get there, the, the days of people coming with a car that is gone, they now come with nothing. And when they get there, they start looking for opportunities. Whether positive or negative is the issue. Remember the beginning of I mean, 
before the end of last government, it was so bad that I had a lecture to deliver in Ibadan. I refused to go. Why? Days on end, if you remember, people were being kidnapped along Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Yeah. For almost two years, I could not step out of Lagos for fear of being kidnapped. It's not, I mean, if only they will kidnap you and then people like you will gather money and pay and let them give you. But the beating, the subject people to, the kind of ill treatment people are giving, is enough to touch the mind, the soul, and the heart of those in government and say, oh, we must be, I mean, precise I in doing all of this. Something. Unfortunately, when you say people like you will gather money and pay, we don't have money to You pay. must understand this. Okay. We, no, no, we, because we, it, what let me kind of statements we, we make, because we have the generality of That's people right. watching, the kind right. of statements we yes, make yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I understand, yeah. but, but I'm telling you my reality. Right. I have relations who have been kidnapped. They came back to tell things. You can imagine somebody recounting what happened to him or her, and he was weeping, even after they had been released. If not enough is being done in all of these things. We must get that. That is why I asked earlier that is multi-level um, policing the way to go like Afeni Ferry is suggesting as it is? I'm not... Um, when you say multi-level policing, the process of bringing that to life is not a 90-day thing or a 30-day thing. It takes a while. From when you will call for applications... We will apply, you will start sorting them out, recruiting, training them. It takes time. Perhaps if we are started, then we will be there. But we still have enough security outreach on ground to address this matter that could do this job. So, what is happening? They are not doing enough, and that's the reality. Let me tell you what is we missing? still have policemen, both mobile and regular, going about carrying back for. With wives of VIPs. We should withdraw them? Is that what you I mean? They are, they, whereas there are far more serious general duties that they could have been deployed to for the benefit of the mass of the people. I mean, so for, for me, they were not trained as personal escorts or guards. They were trained as national law enforcement officers. So I'd rather they are asked to, they are allowed to do what they are trained to do. We've not, now, if, if we say we're not in a state of war, we are deceiving ourselves. Our military, they've been overstretched. We must get that very clear. Perhaps they need to recruit more, and then, because it has got into a panic level now. It's not a pedestrian thing anymore. When I was reading the story of Nabina, the family, right? Yes. I was in tears, because it could have been my family, it could have been anybody's family. Mm -hmm. The one that killed me, what, when they killed Na, 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 Nabina, Na, Nabina in Najiba's presence, that girl will live with that trauma for a long time to come. Mm. It, did, it took all of that before more positive action could be taken. Now, as I was saying, we still need technology to help us somebody, and they are available down the shelf. Why are we not using the, 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 the drones and all of that? A Nigerian came up with a device that can detect smoke no matter how far away. Because when people are kidnapped, they still, I mean, they stay in the forest. They still make fire to keep the kidnappers warm, if anything. They still make fire to make their, to, to, to make their food. The, the guy came and said, look, this thing works. Nobody listened to him. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we've spent so much, like you mentioned earlier. So if we're not... Getting all of these equipments, like you are pointing out, what were we doing with the money? You are asking me what to worry it's... Do. I mean, it was in this country that the whole IG was sent to prison for stealing money meant for operations. It was in this country that the chief of air staff buried money in a, in a soaking away pit and it was discovered. I mean, so all of those things, there are still country. There are people who are benefiting from all of these things. and. What do you do? They're in position of authority and power until they are caught. They're not guilty. That's what the law says. Mm. So they're still wrecking. They, some of them don't even know the far and wide consequences of all of the things that they are doing. Because if they do, I think maybe their courtiers will be freed and they will not do otherwise. You've had soldiers, uh, troops, fighting, complaining that they were not well fed. Mm. They were begging for rations now. Forget that some people say they didn't get their allowance and all of that. So 
These are things that are fundamental. And the earlier we start addressing that by making sure that we terminate the no consequence environment that we have created, the better for all of us. Well, uh, talking about no consequence, I saw a video of, that's not a question, but I just want to buttress what you said. And I saw a video of a, a kidnapper or someone who was arrested, and he was telling the policeman that, I'm, jo I'm just going to spend a year, the way you're treating me, I will come back. Come back for you, I should leave you. After, after mm. a year, and then you can wonder how that, the audacity, the level of audacity, the audacity. those people mm. have. But then, Afeni Ferry is not the first time they are calling for, um, you know, multi-level policing. At the point, they will say, that we should, you know, uh, have state policing. state policing and all of that. But others have argued on the other side that uh, if we have state policing, people will be using them, politicians will be using them to their own advantage. And then you ask the question, which I'm asking you, what is more important about uh, people using them to their own advantage during elections as against the all year round when security is very important to the lives of the people? You see, I've always been an apostle of state police. But then, the, the question you want to also ask is, the resources, are they available or are they going to be made available? We have, st there was a case of a state here who the state recruited sportsmen and women. They were prepared for a contest. They went to the contest and then they came back. They were not given any money. They had to riot. They abandoned the contest and they had to riot. Imagine if that state was giving the guy to start a police uh, organization. And then they calling guys to apply. They brought them in. They trained them, armed them. One month, two months, three months, they don't get paid their salaries. What do you think will happen? Mm. They will unleash mayhem on the people they were brought in to protect. And that's my fear. How many states in Nigeria today are economically viable enough to, you know, to finance and to properly fund a state police. Amotekun came in with all the hindrances that they had and all the, the, the challenges. They made a lot of difference. Absolutely. They made a lot, and I'm telling you this, mm. because I could now go to, I was in Oshubo not too long ago, and Aramoko and all of that, because they, are, they made the road safer. But what has happened to Amotekun now? That they cannot, you know, get I'm talking, integrated, okay? Or and allow then, them to bear arms. Get them, they have to be armed. Get them, let them be trained and be armed. Mm. It's important because the criminals are coming after innocent souls. They come with superior firepower. They're not coming with toy guns. They come with live guns. And they are becoming increasingly mindless. Mm. I can't imagine packing five children of the same father and then in the presence of one of them, shooting one of them, I mean, it's the height of man's humanity to mankind. So we should take it very seriously. For all I know, Lagos, Ogwa, maybe rivers are the states that can conveniently fund state police in this country. But actually, there are states that cannot still pay 80,000 naira minimum. So it means that it's not going to work. The state police... Okay, so it's not enough to say state police. Yeah, people, we have a culture here. Once somebody says something, they pick the narrative, they run with it. The question is the fundamentals. Mm. Have you taken care of them? Is anybody thinking in that regard? It takes a lot to run the police. Lagos State, for instance, spends more on Nigerian police, the state command, than the federal government. Mm. How many states can afford that? Right. They have to establish the security trust fund in Lagos State. Yes. And they reach out to, you know, rich other people states here, can, coming. Other states can borrow a leaf from Lagos to do that. I'm not saying they can. Some other states, I can't remember the name now. They also attempted it. But sure. once the funding is not there, where do you go? Hmm. Osho is a basically civil servant, uh, the state of culture and all of that. I mean, it's a place I know quite well. So how many companies do they have? That are viable enough to say, okay, to keep our environment safe, take one billion naira. Because now, with the exchange rate, you know what it means now buying arms, because you are buying from outside of the country mm. and you are paying in foreign exchange. Mm. So it's a serious thing. It's not just not to say, oh, state police, state police. Nobody is against state police. But are we, do we have the funds for the logistics so that we will not be uh, taking something away with the left, left hand? I'm bringing it back with the right, right hand. hand. Mm. Anybody that is recruited to work in the police 
um, the state police, they should be ready to take care of them and treat them well. So that they will be motivated to put their lives on the line to make sure that it's peace. Right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Amoteku is just there. They can use that platform, okay? And let's see how we can, I mean, improve their lot. Mm. But they, they, they made a difference when they first came. Right. Now, there's the matter of fifth columnist among security personnel that was also mentioned uh, by Afeni Ferry saying that uh, when you talk about kidnapping, someone who knows those who are kidnapped are involved. And then for the security, on the security aspect, that there are some security personnel who are part of these persons that are uh, wreaking havoc and not allowing government's effort to be felt yeah. and seen in the country. How is it so challenging for us to, you know, find these persons and not get them? Because even in Plateau, uh, the, the situation in Mangu, for instance, there were those who were also saying that security personnel are part of what is going on. You know, those statements flying around and the military had come out to say that they would not appreciate such statement and if they know any person they should come step forward and you know bring their evidence actually but this is becoming concerning where persons meant to secure people are being accused I mean, part of the problem um, i will do regards to you guys i don't know how old you were when Adini was raining and in the arm robber a policeman was the one giving them arms renting police guns to them. Of course, it was apprehended and they paid for it. So if that happened then, and it's not happening now, should we say it's an innovation or it's novel? No, it's always been there. We've had several cases of robberies that the robbers will say they go, they are gone from the police or from the military. So it's not a new thing. Unfortunately, it's not enough for two family staff to be, I mean, to be displeased with the statement. But the point is, what are they doing to make sure that their you know, officers and men are reined in and made to understand that they are supposed to protect and therefore should not cross the border and now become the ones arranging insecurity? If it's not happening, nobody will have been saying it. The same way a government here has said they should stop paying ransom. If they don't pay ransom, what exactly are you doing to stem the tide? Right. Because people whose relations are kidnapped, they won't fold their arms and be waiting. A traditional ruler in the East yesterday in the media report said the police didn't get him released, that he paid ransom. You know, so have truths and lies and all that, so it will be happening. Yeah. If the police comes and says, we rescued this man, it should be true. Not in all intention, the man will now come and say, no, 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 I paid before I was released. Some of these things are part of the reasons why we are not making headway. We had trust. We had the uh, troops here who were going to secure other nations while winning awards and coming back to the country. We Lawrence, where are they? Mm. I mean, I've lived here. I've been around for over sixty years. So, I, I mean, nobody can tell me I don't know enough. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So the reality is, they must be. They must get up, roll up their their shirts, and begin to look at the architecture that they are operating and see how it can be tinkered with, whereby whatever is not working can be detected, can be isolated, and then resolved. Hmm. So um, it, it's one thing for the government to play that important role of security and property of people, you know, using the security apparatus. It's another thing for the people themselves to also uh, play their own part. Right. Talk to us about the role, the role of the civilians you know, in ensuring that you know, we have a peaceful society, because we, we, we understand that some traditional rulers, some uh, you know, people within the society also collude with these people. Well, it's unfortunate. We've had several cases across the country, okay? It's unfortunate. But you see, the people also, yesterday I delivered a lecture on responsible citizenship. We have a lot of people here who do not realize that sometimes their public conduct gives them away and makes them victims of target kidnapping. Perhaps, again, we call for public enlightenment. People will now know that, hey, when you are in public places, you don't, you don't receive calls or make phone calls or talk about money or business things or whatever. And then you mind the company you keep. You also reduce social outings. That's the demand of the times. 
Stop going to party. Stop going to spray. Stop going to impress people. You know, because if you just stay in your house, whether you eat chicken or you drink garlic, nobody gets to know. But when you go around looking well dressed, looking rich, looking wealthy, looking comfortable, you make your, you put yourself in harm's way. That's also very critical. Again, for people, yeah, you see, we, we, evil has been with us since creation. The story of uh, um, is it J Esau and uh, Jacob or something? Jacob Can't remember. Yeah, so Jacob, he, he will always be there. He will always Ken and Abel. Ken and Abel, yeah. He will always be there. But if you, as an individual, but can be conscious that you must do everything to keep yourself alive by not giving away information about yourself. We've talked about people giving people information on the need to know basis. For instance, you do a business knowing where I'm going after here. I mean, but people easily throw around information, and especially those who are fairly well to do, let's not say very now, when they have drivers, drivers can tell their itinerary for the next one year. All those things, are, they have to stop. And as I said, the moment anybody is caught and is found guilty, let the heavy hand of the law be brought on them so what that we serve as um, what should that be? money, as it is now, because they started killing people, they should be killed. That's right. Yeah. Mm. They, I mean, they, there's no other... You, you, the, the family of Nabina today, they are mourning. Not because she had an accident and died, or electric shock in the house, but because some mindless human beings wanted to use her to threaten, you know, what that's to say, if you don't pay. And they were killing people at random, almost on a daily basis. And I was wondering, are these human beings? They are. Don't also forget that the, 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 some people who were allowed to come into Nigeria, mm. at that time, they were brought into Nigeria, some for election purposes, mm. some for whatever. They are still with us. Mm. So there is a multifaceted problem. And government must be very frontal about it. There are people who have knowledge and ideas on what to do. Let them call them in. Listen to them. Then we can move forward. All right. We we'll have to leave this uh, conversation here now. Oladeh Ndiyario, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right.